What's poppin', poppin' T-subs and t squad? So listen, before I get down to today's review, I have to let you all in on this brand new streaming service that's been around for about a year now, and it is called BK World Tube. Yeah, girl, BK World Tube. Who are BK World Tube? I'm so glad you asked, daughter. For all intents and purposes, they're the new black Netflix, where they show all of the latest and greatest black urban TV and sitcoms. They do everything from Love and Hip Hop franchise to the Real Housewives franchise to Tyler Perry's If Loving You Was Wrong, probably the haves and the half nots, and they even also do RuPaul's Drag Race. Definitely, definitely, definitely love that. So for everybody who is all down with supporting all of our black businesses, please click the link down in my description box and go on over there and get your BK World Tube on, girl. Tell them I sent you and they gonna treat you right. And now, on to today's review. Oh, man. What's going on, Ken, folk? The last video of the night. Lord Jesus, we finally down to the end, girl. Um, is Miss Insecure. This is season four, episode six, low key done. Like, comment, share, and most importantly, subscribe. Be sure to hit the bell, become notification gang gang. If you really rock with my channel the way y'all say y'all do, please make sure to watch those ads. My PayPal and Cash app will be listed down into the description box. You can also donate to the channel by joining. I have two tiers. Both tiers are recurring payments on your charge cards every month. Please feel free to cancel at any time if need be. Um, you can also donate to the channel by heading over to teesprings.com slash teetalkbooty for all of your tea talk needs. And continuously to, and continuously make sure that you're standing up with me with supporting all of our black businesses by going down to my description and clicking the link to BK World 2. They're basically better known as the Black Netflix. It's a streaming service. The sign up is absolutely free where you could go off and watch all of your black syndicated TV, sitcoms, documentaries, um, reality shows and things of that nature. Just tell them I sent you and they're going to treat you right. Miss Insecure. So the episode starts off with Issa waking up thinking about the argument that she had between her and Molly. Issa is self-conscious in the mirror. Tells her she doesn't always have to be the one to meet, reach out. Molly needs to reach out because she was just as wrong as she was. And I have to absolutely agree. I've been in predicaments where I've gotten, I've fallen out with people and I had to always be the one to reach out first. Even if the argument had nothing to do with me, I didn't start it, but I would still have to reach out first. And I had to learn how to stop doing that, especially when it's a situation where I didn't kick it off. I didn't pop it off. It was you. And then I'm finding myself reaching out to you, apologizing first when majority of the time I don't have a damn thing to be apologizing about. I feel like Molly took that situation to a point that it did not have to go. I think she is so gone ho about finally be about finally um not being a thought, a thought bop, a sad piece, finally getting her a piece of a man. And, you know, she's now on this high horse or trying to grandstand and act as if everything that Issa would do would somehow ruin that relationship, which is completely dumb, completely stupid, completely idiotic to me. I don't know where she got that, her ways of thinking from, but it is what it is. Like, I'm with, like, Issa, if I was your reflection in the mirror, bitch, I would tell you the same thing. You let that hoe come crawling back to you down on bending knee. Shout out to boys the men. Anyway. Um, Nathan fine ass calls to check on Issa. Shout out to Nathan, baby. Nathan is so fine. His voice, the way he looked, the way he walked, his smile is just impeccable. And Issa, I'm sorry. I would have been laid the low and spread a wide for that man. Um, especially after you done got into that nasty piece of fight and argument, damn near melee with Marley. Girl, Molly, girl, that's the perfect time to go off and jump on the dig. Jump, jump, jump on the dig. Hey, like how you trick daddy. Um... Uh, 
Issa helps pay for a pregnant woman's things at the grocery store, but her card got declined trying to do so. Child, I don't know. Girl, the sad part is the lady had a little hand basket and she had a few items in there. Issa had a big bottle of wine, a real big, a, ju a handle of wine, and it came up to over $110. Now, girl, the gag is I believe every single solitary word of that. First of all, she has some expensive ass huggies up in there. You know, huggies damn near cost the same amount as a mortgage of a, 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 up to a house. Not to mention... All of the other little knick-knack, patty wax, give a dog bone that she had down there to the um hand cart, plus Issa's little old cheap ass wine that she got. Um, so girl, the card said, "Look, sis, I understand you trying to do good deeds out here, but uh, it won't get done today on my card because I ain't got it to gig it. So Issa, you better be glad. Cause ain't no need for you going down to the hole for this pregnant woman. Where her baby daddy at? Why her baby daddy can't pay for the huggies and I got got and all the other little knickknack, patty wax, give a dog a bone she got down to her shop cart." I mean, I was with your car, uh, charge card on that. Girl, don't go broke trying to be generous for these hoes that wouldn't go broke for you. Anyway, then she helps this old rickety ass man um, after she sees him missing the bus and he was chasing after the bus and she decides to be nice to get him a ride. But the whole time that he was in the car with her, he was giving her grief. Like, and it, it was completely, uh, Lord. My bad. Shout out to Color Me Pink, y'all. Color Me Pink just put out her um, review of the Real Housewives of Atlanta, and they completely... I, I was trying to clear it, and then I clicked on it, and that's why they was doing it. Shout out. Uh, anyhow, back to what I was saying. He was completely rude to this woman the whole time that they was riding off in the car, but then come to find out he got dropped off to a house and some boy answered the door, talk about something, daddy. And then I look, I said, this, that, that's damn near a grown ass man. And now you want to go off and see your damn son after he done finally grew up? Child, isn't that always the case with our black men, sadly? Anyhow, um... Issa goes to paint and sip where she meets some ladies and they go to the bar afterwards. Um, they stick her with the bill and then they leave. Shout out to Kyla Pratt. Girl, after that flop of a season of um, Black Ink Crew Compton, I guess uh, she said, well, since I can't depend on you to bring home the bread and butter, I'm going to just have to go back out and do my little thug thizzle the best way that I know how. I know that's right, Kyla Pratt. Now, it ain't like you ain't got no uh, talent, Kyla. There's no reason why we just now seeing you back on our TV screens after all of this long while. Um, Y'all was dead ass wrong for leaving Issa stuck with that bill like the way y'all did. She was very nice to y'all. She allowed to give y'all some of her Peregrigio and all that good stuff. Y'all had a good time. Y'all invited her out. And the sad part about it was she wasn't going to go, but then her self-conscious was like, nah, you should go ahead and go. Well, Issa, you need to cut yourself out, okay? Because if it wasn't for your self-conscious, you wouldn't have had to play dine and dash with them rickety hoes. Anyway... She goes to see her mom and she tells her mom everything that's been going on with her. I absolutely loved that portion of the whole show. Um, I love the fact that, you know, Issa and her mom can still sit down, talk. She can share her feelings and her mom can give her great advice. And basically the advice that she gave her was stop overthinking things all the time. You still trying to find yourself. And if this is something that you're good at and you enjoy doing it, then there's no tea and there's no shade. Forget everybody else who don't see your vision or don't support your vision. Basically is what um, her mama was saying. And I was with that. Shout out to Raquel Robinson. I'm glad we see you still working, sis. Shout out to you, Principal Greer. Um, shout out to you, Tasha Mack. Um, so then Kelly, Kelly called, I mean, Issa calls back Kelly and Kelly feel like both Issa and Molly needs to sit down and talk. And again, I'm really glad that Issa stuck to her guns. It's like, I'm so sick and tired of always having to be the one to reach out to her. 
I'm no longer doing that. If she really cares about me and if she really cares about this friendship, then she will call me much like I had to do back, back during the duration of our friendship, pretty much. And like the premise is basically being shown that whenever they got into something, it was always Issa who had to go clear the air. You know what I'm saying? Break the ice, shake hands, kiss babies. And I'm sorry, I'm, I'm with Issa. I'm not about to do that no more. She's just as wrong as I am over this forced relationship that she's forcing not only herself, but Andrew to be in too, I guess, to try to prove something to me that she can hold the relationship. And it's not that serious. And I'm going to tell you something. When she was talking on the phone to Nathan, she said, listen, I'm sorry. I did not want, I don't want you to feel like I was using you. And I loved what he said. He said, using me, you're not using me. You needed somebody to be there for you. And that's what I did. That's what you're supposed to do when you consider somebody a friend. If you can help them, you will do whatever it takes to help them. That's what you do. Talk about some called Molly. Girl, bye. So then Issa goes to an Ethiopian restaurant because she was smoking a joint and homegirl got the munchies and found out all she had in her fridge was um girl that that cheap ass bottle of Peregrigio, a bottle of water and some mayonnaise. And so then she decided to go down to the uh, Ethiopia restaurant and she sees Molly there and she contemplated on going in maybe to talk to her or whatever the case may be but she decided against and I was all here for it stick to your guns you don't need to walk up and talk to her she's the reason why you guys had a falling out because she took that argument to a place and a point that it did not need to get to so I'm sorry as it pertains to this I don't feel like Issa needs to be the one to sit up and apologize for anything let her come and apologize come uh, falling on her knees and to come begging me please she fall on her knees for all of these other dudes that she was with. Why can't she do it for her friendship? I was there with it. But y'all, that's really all I got. I ain't got no more to give. Tonight's episode, it was, it was, it was, I mean, you know, it, 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 it was okay. You know, it wasn't chuck full of nothing really, you know what I mean? But it wasn't bad either. So definitely shout out to everybody that was involved. Um, let's get the discussion popping. Y'all jump down in the comments. Y'all let me know who's sad. Y'all alone. Let me know what y'all thought about tonight's night, tonight's episode. And um, I'm going to holler at y'all tomorrow for Camp Getaway because, um, you know, girl, loving Hip Hop Atlanta is OV and I don't do um, anything that Clifford T.I. is on. So, um, yeah, I'm going to holler at y'all later, I guess. Bye. <laughs>